All right, so I've been wanting to make a video on how to shop on an autoimmune reversal diet. And I thought, you know what, with something this important, I need to bring in the professionals. I called my wife. So we're gonna follow her and she's gonna show us how to shop for an autoimmune reversal diet. Let's take a look. So we're here at the grocery store and I'm going to take you shopping with me today to learn how to shop for an autoimmune reversal diet. And keep in mind, even though there's some basic foundational principles that are going to apply to everyone, everyone's situation is going to be a little bit different and so you're going to have to make those adjustments along the way. I recommend getting a gut sensitivity test because then you'll be able to see what exactly you're having a hard time with. Also keep in mind that for the first two weeks as you're trying to heal and recover, your small intestine, your digestion, it's very stressed and damaged and so you're going to want to give it foods that are easy to digest that means you're going to want to avoid some things that are a little harder to digest, for example, nightshades perhaps, and or nuts. So with that said, let's go shopping. So a few basic principles as we go into the store and we shop. One is we want to really look out for GMOs. We want to shop non-GMO, and I'm going to show you how to do that, not just in the produce section, but we're going to go through some labels and see how to identify GMOs on the label, because they're not labels, and so we need to be able to identify them ourselves. Another thing we want is to get as much organic as possible, and that can be pricey sometimes, so I'm going to show you how to maneuver the prices so that you're able to um, shop as much organic as possible. Another thing we want to look for is getting things gluten-free. And some people might wonder, what is gluten? They don't even know what to look for. So I'm going to show you how to shop gluten-free. And then lastly, we want to shop plant-based. So here we are starting with the strawberries. Now, something interesting with strawberries. If I don't find it organic, then I just don't get it. Because it's actually at the top of the Dirty Dozen list. But do you know what the Dirty Dozen list is? It's a list that lists out the top 12 items of produce that are the most pesticide saturated. There's actually an app on the phone called the Dirty Dozen app, so that when you're in the grocery store, you just look up on your app. There it is, Dirty Dozen. So when you look, let's see what it says, the top 12. Whoa, there we find strawberries are actually number one, top 12, and of course you see the others. But with strawberries being up there at the top, that means they have lots and lots of chemicals, pesticides left on them. So we want to make sure and get them organic. So here we are. They're actually on sale right now where the organic strawberries on sale. And that's when I like to get them is um, just look for the sales, make sure they're in season and you'll be getting them ripe and you'll get them good prices. In the winter, you're probably not going to find them or you're gonna pay an arm and a leg for them. So shop in season, look for the sales and keep those items uh, organic that are on the dirty dozen list so we can get some organic strawberries. There's certain things you definitely want to get organic. Bell peppers, bell peppers is something you always want to get organic because it's high up there on the dirty dozen list. Corn, of course, this only comes out once a year in the summertime but you want to make sure and look for organic. Start requesting these things because you might not even find organic corn in the cob but if you request it hopefully they'll start carrying it, but this is of course um, genetically modified unless it says organic or non-GMO, so you want to get corn in the cob organic. Tomatoes are something you want to get organic all the time. Now something that is a little trick is you see there's little tags on each of the piece items of produce. The tags, they, they have a number. Now anything that has a 9, which starts with a 9, that means it's organic. So you see the number 9 and then the rest of it that means that this is organic. So that's one way you can tell too, if the signs are unclear. Now, avocados, they're on the Clean 15 list, meaning they don't have very many pesticides and chemicals. So that's something that it's fine to get uh, non-organic, just conventional. Another thing is you notice it has a skin. You're not gonna eat the skin. So that's one way you can tell also something that's not going to be as bad to get non-organic. So you can just get regular avocados. So you have organic and conventional bananas. Well, you could get conventional because they have the peel and they are not in the dirty dozen. However, one thing to consider is that food 
produce that comes into the country has been radiated to destroy bugs and things that might come with them. But if it's organic, it hasn't been raided. And so if the price difference is small, say it's like 10, 20 cents price difference per pound, which usually is the case with bananas, then you might choose to go for the organic bananas. So also another thing to look for is the ripeness. If you, if you look at the color of the produce, like the bananas, they should be bright, almost like an orangey yellow instead of a, a lime yellow then you know that they have more nutrients in them. So here we are in the vegetable section. You see a lot of greens, a lot of beautiful fresh vegetables. This is where you're going to get the bulk of your vitamins and minerals. Remember, things like kale, collard greens, Swiss chard, those are at the top of the nutrient scale. And this is all for grabs when you, when you have an autoimmune, unless you have something very specific that you might be having a sensitivity or an allergy to. But the vegetables, the vegetables are all game. You want to go for cilantro, parsley, basil, mint, and all of your greens. Kale is at the top of the scale of nutrients. Uh, however, if you do have a thyroid issue, Hashimoto's, Graves, any kind of thyroid issue, the cruciferous vegetables like kale and collard greens, broccoli, cauliflower, the cruciferous vegetables, those are going to have an extra demand for iodine if you eat them raw. And so if you have a thyroid issue, simply steam those vegetables. You can just steam your kale, have it with rice or quinoa, something like that, your broccoli, your cauliflower, just so that you're not placing an extra burden on your thyroid. Now if you want to juice some greens, if you want to juice some greens, Swiss chard is actually also up at the top of the nutrient scale, but Swiss chard is not a cruciferous vegetable, so you can juice that and get your nutrients. Now, beets are something that we get every week. Beets are not a cruciferous vegetable, so you can have plenty of those even if you have a thyroid issue. Beets are really good for cleansing the blood and the liver, which is important when you have an autoimmune because you're trying to detoxify your body. So make this a part of your regular shopping trip and don't throw these out. These beet greens are amazing. You can juice them or what I love doing is just simply steam them just like you would spinach. Chop them up, steam them and uh, they're delicious with some Himalayan full mineral salt and some coconut milk. Delicious. Okay, here we are in the potato onion section. Now, potatoes are a staple of diet. You're going to be able to get some good solid calories from potatoes. However, look out for the uh, white russet variety is a variety that is in GMO. So they're also on the dirty dozen list. So we always get organic potatoes. And if you get them in a bag, like a five pound bag, then you're going to be able to get them for a lot less per pound. So get bulk up on your potatoes, white russet, the yellow gold potatoes, the red potatoes, there's a lot of varieties. That's gonna be a good source of your sustenance. Now if you are very sensitive and you have a problem with nightshades, then you might need to take a break on the potatoes for a couple weeks, a month, till you start peeling, till you start feeling better. But sweet potatoes are not a nightshade, even though they're both called potatoes, sweet potatoes are not a nightshade. So if you do have a problem with nightshades, then have sweet potatoes. This can be a staple for you. Is have sweet potato, you can have it every day if you want, and you're not gonna have a problem with it. So we try to get organic with these too. Apples are something that I always buy organic because they're on the dirty dozen list, and the pesticides can sink right down in there and kind of stay in the apple. So you wanna get organic apples, $2 a pound, is a great price for organic apples when they go on sale. Lemons and limes, these are something you want to incorporate into your daily routine as the lemons are very cleansing for the liver. Of course, it's better to get organic, but if you can't find them organic, then it's not a big deal. Sound like a lot of information? Are you afraid you're not gonna remember everything when you're at the grocery store? Well, we've put together a handy little autoimmune shopping guide for you. You can just click the link below to download it for free. Now here we are in the fish section. Now this is a section that I would actually skip. If you have autoimmune, there's a big issue with toxicity. And if you notice, many grocery stores have signs like this. 
Warning, nearly all fish and shellfish contain some amount of what? Mercury and related compounds. And it goes on. So really, when you are eating fish, you are getting a daily dose of heavy metal toxicity, mercury. Okay, here we are in the nuts and seeds section. Nuts and seeds are a great place to get your uh, protein. They're a great source of fiber. Now, if you are just starting to heal from your autoimmune, you're going to want to lay off of the nuts for two weeks and instead have seeds. You got sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, chia seeds, ground flax seed. So for two weeks, you want to avoid nuts. We've got some great seeds here. We've got chia seeds, which are a great source of omega-3s. And these are great to make in a non-dairy pudding with coconut milk. Also, you've got brown flax seed, which is nice to grind. This is probably the best source of omega-3s. You've got golden flax seed. So these are sources, chia, brown flax seed, golden flax seed. They're sources of omega-3s where you're not going to get the mercury that you would get if you're eating fish. And also, what most people don't realize is that these plant sources of omega-3s have many times the amount of omega-3s that fish has in them. And then we have sesame seeds. This is one of the best sources of calcium. And I like to get them uh, with the hulls, so they're a little tan brown as opposed to the white ones. They're great to grind up with some garlic powder, turmeric, and Himalayan salt and use as a parmesan on top of your salads or soups or other foods. Something special about nuts and seeds is you're going to want to soak all of them. What I find is easier is just take your whole bag of say walnuts, almonds, soak them overnight in the morning, drain them, rinse them well, and then just dehydrate them, which you can do if you have a dehydrator, but if not, you can just lay them out on a pan, put them in the oven at the lowest temperature with the door cracked open for several hours until they get nice and dry and crispy again. Now two nuts that you want to avoid if you have autoimmune are peanuts and pistachios. They are subject to mold growth and mold produces aflatoxin, which is one of the most toxic substances there is. This is what people have allergic reactions to when they're allergic to peanuts, where they have deadly reactions. So you wanna lay off of those when you have an autoimmune condition. So we're gonna start in the bulk bin with the salt. So here we've got, we've got pink Himalayan salt. And it's pink because it has minerals in it. I think it's a beautiful salt. And so this salt actually has all of the 84 trace minerals in it. It has not been refined like the normal table salt has and many sea salts actually. So we get Himalayan mineral salt, which has all the minerals, or we get Celtic sea salt, which is a gray moist salt. So you wanna get salt that has all the minerals in it because then it's going to be coming into your body in a balanced whole package manner. You can get it from the bulk section, but another another option is to get it through a co-op, which is what my husband and I do. We go through Azure Standard, and I'll, we'll put a link below for Azure Standard. It's a co-op where you place an order online once a month, and then a big semi-truck comes once a month to a set location in your area, and they drop off people's groceries. You can just meet there and pick up your groceries. I'm going to show you the different green, grains and beans and nuts to get. You can get in bulk in the bulk section, but you also might want to check out to see if there's a co-op that you can get better prices on those bulk items. Now we're in our bean section here. Now if you just take a look, look at the wide variety. We have uh, these colorful, beautiful beans. So beans, lentils, this is a great source of calories, great source of protein. This is a bulk staple for you when you're on an autoimmune reversal diet. And you have lots to choose from. Just remember to soak them overnight or for eight hours, then drain them, rinse them well, and then it's good to cook them for a long time. We use a crock pot for that, and it really makes things a lot easier. These are so easy to do. 
And now we have some grains here. Now, of course, you want to be looking for non-gluten grains because gluten is a serious trigger for autoimmune diseases. So you want to look for grains that are non-gluten. So we've got lots of rice here. You do want to make sure your rice is organic. Of course, you're trying to get as much organic as you can, but rice, make sure you get organic. You've got all different kinds. This is something that you want to avoid for a couple weeks when you're first starting to heal, though. But then after you start healing, then you can start adding these great grains back in. So you've got rices here, all different kinds. And then I want to point you to a couple of very special, what you might call grains, but they're actually seeds. Is we've got quinoa. Uh, you've got quinoa, and there's a couple of kinds. If you look, you've got your regular quinoa, and then you've got this beautiful mix of white, black, and red, and then you've got a red quinoa. This is a non-gluten grain, and it's actually technically a seed. And so this is something really good to have, and it's something you can have for the first two weeks as you're healing. Again, you want to make sure you soak it and rinse it well. And then we also have buckwheat down here. Buckwheat is not a wheat. It's not a grain. It's actually a seed. These are buckwheat groats, and they're raw. When they've been roasted and they're more of a tan color that's what you would call cashy we use these a lot in cooking the quinoa and the buckwheat and they are something that you can have right off the bat even in those first couple weeks of healing and you can make pancakes out of these check out the website for pancake recipe these with buckwheat and quinoa same thing you just want to soak them for eight hours or overnight drain rinse them well but that is a really good thing to have when you're trying to recover from an autoimmune Okay, now we have something called millet. Millet does not have gluten in it, so that's good. Um, but it's also one of those that you wanna avoid for the first two weeks as you're trying to heal and recover because it is more of a grain. So when you use this, you wanna also remember to soak it overnight or eight hours, and then you can cook it like a hot cereal. So this is a really nice seed. A lot of people have questions about oats. Are they gluten-free or are they not? Well, oats are actually a gluten-free grain. However, they are often contaminated with gluten. And people with gluten sensitivities, people with autoimmune diseases, you're going to be very sensitive to oats with gluten contamination. So, most people who have autoimmune diseases need to be off of oats for a year, two years, maybe even three years completely because of that close relation with them and gluten grains because of the contamination. So unfortunately this is one you're going to want to get off of for a while but once you get better this is a good grain to reintroduce back into your diet. It's gluten free. Just make sure you get oats that say that they are certified gluten free so that there's no contamination. So this is something to look forward to as you heal. This is something that my husband got back and I got back to because I eliminated them with him. And it was nice to get this grain back, but we learned about many new grains in the process. Okay, something that I love to have is a jar of red sauce, pasta sauce, on hand. Now, if you're sensitive to nightshades, you might have to avoid tomatoes for a little while till you start getting better. But if you can have the nightshades, just test and see how you do with them. So red sauce is great, but a few things that you need to look out for on the label are citric acid, because that can come from GMO corn. Also soybean oil, because that's commonly found in red sauce and that is from GMO soybeans likely. Also, I avoid pepper, black pepper, white pepper, because it's irritating to the lining of the small intestine. And you really want to pamper and baby your small intestine because of your leaky gut, which you have most likely in a case of an autoimmune disease. So, you look at the ingredients, you just have to learn to uh, read the ingredients, bring your magnifying glass if you have to. But there you've got soybean oil, you've got black pepper, and you've also got citric acid. So those are things that are going to be really irritating for your digestive system. So we're going to put this one back, and I'm going to show you my favorite one, which is, looks like most people's favorites. This one's always either empty or almost empty on the shelf. So other people are doing the same thing that I am, I guess is this 365 brand organic tomato basil. It's organic, so you're using organic non-GMO tomatoes. And then when you look at the ingredients here, there's no 
pepper, like no black pepper, white pepper. There is no soy, there is no sugar, and uh, everything looks good on there. So this is the one that we like to get, and we'll get it by the case. And sometimes if you get a case of an item, you can get 10% off. Now we're in the pasta section because who doesn't love pasta, right? And thankfully, when you have an autoimmune disease and you have to be gluten-free to recover, you can still enjoy pasta. And usually what is used instead of wheat is brown rice or regular rice. And so you can find things even like lasagna. And of course, here's a regular and here's an organic. They're both brown rice lasagna. Uh, I'll go with the organic because it's rice and rice can be contaminated with lead. And so we'll go with the organic brown rice, but you can make, still have lasagna with your red sauce and your pasta. Now, again, if you're in a serious condition and you're trying to recover those first two weeks, you wanna avoid grains. So you wanna avoid rice for those first couple weeks. Use quinoa instead. Uh, but after those first couple weeks, as you're on your way to recovery, this is a really good gluten-free pasta option. Really, there's lots of other options. They have every shape. You know, you can get spaghetti. There's organic brown rice pasta. Um, I like to get uh, Trader Joe's organic brown rice pasta. It's got a it's got great texture and it's a good price. And uh, one thing to look out for, though, is just because pasta might be gluten-free, that doesn't mean it's automatically safe. For example, here's a gluten-free pasta. It's made out of corn, rice, quinoa. It says gluten-free, so you think it's safe, right? Well, again, you gotta look to read your labels. The ingredients are corn flour. Now, it doesn't say organic corn. That means this is GMO corn. Rice flour, corn starch, that's going to be GMO corn starch. So, because GMOs don't have to be labeled, you have to read the label and know that if it doesn't say organic, if it doesn't say non-GMO, that means it is by default GMO. If it's corn, uh, canola, soy. This is another good brand, Jovial. It's made with organic brown rice, so you've got your whole grain there because you do want to still eat whole grain, whole foods, and it's organic. Now, here's something that is one of my favorite foods that I could eat with every meal, including breakfast, and thankfully it is good for you on an autoimmune reversal diet, and that is olives. Let me show you my absolute favorite kind. It's something called bright green olives, and when you look at the ingredients, it's just olives, water, and salt. And something really nice is it has a non-BPA lining. So you have the aluminum cans, but they're lined with plastic so you're not getting the aluminum. And many companies are now making them with non-BPA. Something that is very helpful to heal leaky gut is coconut. Now, we get the organic coconut milk from Whole Foods. It is the best price that we've found. And also, they have a non-BPA lining. And the ingredients are very simple. Coconut, well, organic coconut, uh, purified water, and organic guar gum. Okay, something that you probably love or you didn't know you loved until you had to go gluten-free was crackers. Now, of course, most crackers are made with wheat. White flour, wheat flour, that's gluten. So that eliminates a lot of crackers, but thankfully there are many crackers that are being made that are gluten-free now. So let's take a look at those. So as we're looking at the assortment of gluten-free crackers, this is another section you just really have to read the labels and then find which brands and which varieties are going to be safe for you on your autoimmune reversal diet. So let's take a look. We have a box here, it's gluten-free gluten-free crackers, so that's good, but let's take a look at the ingredients. The first ingredient we see is corn starch, and that is not organic, so that is going to be a GMO. And then you've got white rice flour, that's a very refined product, and you go on, it's got eggs, that's something you want to avoid, sugar, 
all sugar that comes from beets is going to be GMO also. So you just look at this list, sodium bicarbonate, that's not good for the digestion, that's baking soda, that neutralizes your stomach acid, um, natural flavor, a lot of things can hide under that. So anyways, this is one that I personally would not go with, with an autoimmune reversal diet. But let me show you one that is my favorite. These crackers are addicting and they are great ingredients. Nut and seed flour bread blends. You just look down the list and this looks good. Now of course you might want to avoid it with the almonds for the first couple weeks but then this would be a great gluten-free cracker to have in your pantry when you want something to eat. Here's one. Mesa Sunrise and it's organic. Looking for these labels, that means everything's organic, non-GMO. And as we look, it does have corn. However, remember, it's organic. It says it has that start and then it says organic. Now, this is something that if you do have an autoimmune disease, you're going to want to be off of for maybe even a year to let your body settle down because when you're eating GMO corn, it can not tell the difference between GMO corn and organic corn. So you want to give your body a break and as you start to heal, this is something that you could add back in as long as it's organic. Whenever my husband and I eat something that's um, made with corn or the corn itself, that is something we strictly get organic because it is heavily sprayed and it's a GMO crop. So. This one is organic, so this can be something you add back in. And it's got um, cane sugar, so of course we don't want to eat anything with a lot of sugar. You can check the sugar amount down below, total sugars. So it's low sugar, and it's not a GMO sugar because it's organic and it's cane sugar instead of beet sugar. Uh, we've got flax seeds, which are organic, buckwheat flour. Again, remember buckwheat, it's not a wheat. It's not a grain, it's actually a seed, and there's no gluten in it, so that's safe. Quinoa, amaranth, sea salt. So this is something that would be okay to get. Now, this is something that you don't really want to make a sta staple because um, it is somewhat processed, but it's something that if you need something in the, in the evening, something quick and light and easy, it's nice to have this on hand. But make the majority of your meals from scratch with whole grain make hot cereals, things like that. Now you might want to have something quick, easy to go, like a power bar. Now let's take a look at the power bars. You just have to learn to read the ingredients and then find the ones that are going to be okay for you. So let's take a look what we have here. It's got a lot of good ingredients, dates and almond butter, cashews, raisins, sesame seeds. But as we look through, a couple things are going to be problematic. One thing is it has oats. It has that little symbol, so it is organic. But just because they're organic doesn't mean that they're certified gluten-free. So these can be contaminated with gluten. And I find that some people who are sensitive to gluten are going to be sensitive to oats that are not Certifi certified gluten-free, so that's going to be problematic. Also, as we look through, it also has citric acid, which is usually made from GMO corn. So this is something that I would probably not get. A Luna bar. Let's look at the ingredients here. So again, you have organic rolled oats. It's nice they're organic, but they're gonna be contaminated with gluten. Also, we have soy protein isolate, and that does not say organic, so that is going to be GMO. So, we wanna avoid that. As we go on, there are organic roasted soybeans, organic soy flour, but when you have an autoimmune disease, you need to be off of soy, at least until you're recovered. When you're completely recovered, you can add soy back in, but it needs to be organic and I would watch out for concentrated forms of soy, such as um, the isolate. And then we have a great brand here, Lara Bar. They have very simple ingredients, 
so simple. They can even put it in larger letters. Dates, cashews, almonds, lemon juice, concentrate, lemon juice, dried lemon juice, concentrate, and lemon oil. Very simple products. So this is something that would be a nice little power bar. Okay, something to look out for, again, is even in the gluten-free category, you've got these gluten-free Pop-Tarts. Oh good, I can have Pop-Tarts. When you look at the ingredients though, yikes, there are some scary things in here. If you just look through, you've got a lot of ingredients that are going to be GMO. You've got sugar beet fiber, corn starch, those are going to be GMO ingredients. You've got eggs, which are not good to have on an autoimmune reversal diet. Citric acid, citric acid up at the top too. Where did that go? Oh, citric acid. So this is something that you would not want to have, even though it is gluten-free. So hummus is something that's nice to grab on the go with some fresh vegetables, carrots, celery sticks, it's so delicious. One thing to look out for though is most brands of hummus have citric acid in it which is irritating to your digestive system. It comes from GMO corn usually and so we want to look out for that. If I just take random hummus off, you look at the ingredients and there it is, you're going to find citric acid. So just look at the brands that you have locally and try to find one that doesn't have citric acid. Or of course you can make your own, it's pretty easy to do with garlic and lemon juice, salt and chickpeas, garbanzo beans. Another thing to look out for that I'm just noticing is you have canola oil here. And since it doesn't say organic, that means that's GMO too. So you've got a couple GMO ingredients in this hummus. And it's best if you get it sprouted, which this brand is really nice. It's organic and it's made with sprouted soybeans, so it's going to be way easier to digest. And so this is something that you can add back once you're completely better. Now when you're recovering from an autoimmune disease, something you really need to avoid is dairy. And of course, you're wondering, what am I going to do for milk? Thankfully, there are a lot of options for plant-based milk. So you've got almond milk and cashew milk and coconut milk. Now, there's a few things to think about when you do this. One is almond milk, which is really popular. Sometimes the almonds are treated with chemicals. They're fumigated with chemicals. There's another way they can deal with almonds and that is flash steam pasteurize them. That's the kind you want. So we've called various companies to see, do you fumigate or do you pasteurize them with steam? As we look at the ingredients though, just a couple things to look out for is you just want to find one without calcium carbonate because that is like sodium bicarbonate which is a strong alkaline which neutralizes your stomach acid which will um, slow down your digestion. So this is not one that I would get. Also something to look out for is the synthetic vitamins like vitamin D2, that's the synthetic version. Um, and so let's look at a different one. Here's an almond milk and it just has filtered water, sprouted almonds, that's great that they're sprouted, and then vanilla flavor from vanilla beans and Himalayan salt. That's really what you want is less of these synthetic vitamins because when you have an autoimmune disease you most likely have a gene mutation, the MTHFR gene mutation, which if you do then your body's not going to be able to convert these synthetic vitamins into the kind that you can use. They're going to accumulate and be more of a toxicity for you. So keep it simple. And of course you can make this on your own. You see the simple ingredients, water, almonds, vanilla, and salt. So this is really the best um, kind of ingredients that you want to get. And there's several companies that are coming out with this now. So just keep an eye, read the ingredients, and of course you can always blend up your own real quick. So there you have it friends, how to shop for an autoimmune safe diet. Now you're probably wondering, I have all of this great food, what do I do with it? What recipes do I make? Good question. Well go to our website reverseautoimmune.com where I'll be continually adding more recipes that are autoimmune safe. Also hit subscribe as our next upcoming videos are going to be me showing you step by step how to make autoimmune safe 
recipes that are delicious. So is there anything I missed? Do you have a question about a food item or product I didn't cover? If so, leave your question in the comments below and we'll be sure to respond. So now we talked about shopping for an autoimmune reversal diet, but they're still detoxing, they're still healing the leaky gut, they're still removing chronic stress. How do you deal with those? If you want more information, we have a free ebook on our website. Click the link below to get that free ebook. You're welcome to it. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. May you be blessed in your pursuit of health.